People have asked me why I made this film, especially not having prior academic or professional experience in filmmaking. Like many of us around the world, I was furious, frustrated, disturbed by how the last election had played out. After giving it considerable thought as to how I personally could make a difference, I used it as motivation to make a futuristic independent film, Azad, as an act of resistance against tyranny. Azad, meaning free as in liberated, was made on a shoestring budget, less than 10,000, in just three months to address some of the issues we are facing, such as xenophobia, Islamophobia, reverse immigration, and intolerance. I felt that regular people like myself needed to get more active politically to help shape the future for not just our country, but the world at large, especially in light of the current political, racial, and religious divide in our society. I believe we are at a crossroads in history. We can either choose to give in to this renewed wave of racism, bigotry, and right-wing radicalization, or stand together united and resist. There are an estimated more than 42 million immigrants in the U.S. alone. About a third of the 324 million people living in the U.S. belong to a minority group. There are about 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. So when a socially relevant film like Azad comes out based in a near dystopian future in which the protagonist is a humanist Pakistani Muslim immigrant, I believe the outreach and impact cannot be overstated. I hope you like our film and find it meaningful enough to spread the word. So together we can help create a better future. And if this film can create even the slightest difference in the world, we'll consider it a success. Thank you, and please follow us on Facebook at Azad the Film. Enjoy the film.
क्या हुआ कुछ नहीं मैं ना पसीना आया आपको बात तो नहीं हो रहा है कुछ नहीं हुआ परेशान ना हो बस बात हो रही है पानी पी उतर रही है इतनी है है ये ये क्या में डाल इसको 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 कुछ कुछ नहीं नहीं हेलो आजाद व्हाट अ प्लेजेंट सरप्राइज अस्सलाम वालेकुम अंकल हाउ आर यू गुड ग्रेट टू सी यू आफ्टर सो मेनी इयर्स या अंकल ग्लैड टू बी बैक विद द फैमिली आफ्टर सच अ लॉन्ग टाइम यू शुड हैव गिवन अस अ हेड्स अप वी वुड हैव कम टू द एयरपोर्ट इट वाज सॉर्ट ऑफ एन अनप्लान ट्रिप अंकल बट आई एम ग्लैड आई एम बैक नाउ ग्लैड टू हैव यू बैक माय सन प्लीज हैव अ सीट अंकल Azad, it's such a long time uh, we are seeing you back. Yeah, uncle, I mean, it's been what ten, fifteen years now. But uh, now you are grown up, boy, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, but I, I miss family, but, of course. And we missed you at the funeral of your grandpa. Yeah, so that's we, something I really uh, wish I could be. Whole, whole family missed you a lot, and you know he was very fond of you. And he was a, he great, was a man. great man. He was a great man, no doubt in it. I miss him so. What's going on in the West nowadays? We are hearing so, so many bad news about that. Let me put it this way: it's actually worse than what they show in the media. Mm. Believe it or not, I see. It's really bad for some people, yeah. depending on your ethnicity, your cultural background, your national origin. It's pretty tough. And uh, any role of religion in that? Religion always plays a role. Yeah. People over here, like Ami and aunties and everyone, they think that just because you're living there, yeah, <laughs> you're living like a king. Yeah, of course. And you don't have anything to worry about. That's what we do. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same thing over there. Like we face the same kind of issues, if not worse. Mm-hmm. Azad, we were planning your marriage this time. <laughs> I don't know, uncle. That's probably the last thing on my mind right now. So much other stuff going on. No, no, but uh, for how long you are here? That's a good question. Aaj aap bete hain, jume ka time ho gaya, jume pal le aap log. Aaj kya hota hai? Kya kya apni kapde change karo? की गवाह है 
वो हमारे ना कभी दोस्त थे ना हमारे दोस्त हैं और ना ही कभी हमारे वो दोस्त होंगे Welcome back from the break. We are here with Mr. Basha Abimalik, the chairman of Nikon Party. So, Mr. Abimalik, we were talking about white fragility. Something you and other conservatives, including our current president, believe don't really exist. What do you have to say to? What exactly is this white privilege that you're talking about, Miss Ruby? The privilege to commit financial crimes worth billions and still not go to jail. The privilege to get elected as the CEO of the company when you drove your previous company down the drain. The privilege to commit rape and get out of jail within three months. Or you better yet get elected as the president. The privilege to get control over the federal building arm and still not be shot. The privilege to give the cop a middle finger and not be handcuffed. The privilege to shoot dozens of people in a theater or in a church and then get a walk away alive. The privilege to invade sovereign countries and murder millions of people and be glorified as a hero? The privilege of being able to get away with killing of unarmed black men. Do you want to hear more, Mr. Abimalek? Look, we've been handing out freebies in this country for a while and it must stop now. Everyone must earn their stripes, prove that they belong, or they'll be sent back to where they came from. Demographics are our destiny. The fact is that the Western civilization is a superior civilization. We cannot restore our civilization with someone else's babies. We are talking about the citizens of this country. It always seems like you and your followers truly believe that minorities should be thankful to even exist in this country, let alone expect equal rights and opportunities. That's not what I said. As I've said before, we don't need to be politically correct anymore. Our race has suffered the most because of all this PC nonsense over the past 30, 40 years. The fact of the matter is that any great accomplishment that you can think of over the past century or so was accomplished by us. Great accomplishments such as slavery and murder of millions of people throughout the history? Mr. B. Malik, you and I both know well that the main reason that the Caucasian race has been able to dominate for so long is not because of their superior genes, but their ability to control over the global economics, financial institutions and the military industrial complex. How does what you profess align with your religious belief? Which, something I have never really understood about the right. Slavery, feudalism, racial identity have been part of our history throughout. Some are created with the need for direction. Others are created to give them direction. It's the intellect and hard work of the white man that has built modern civilization. Excuse me? Hard work? How was the country's infrastructure built? 
through the free black labor. What races perform the majority of the hard labor jobs today? The blacks and the Hispanics. Heck, look at the demographics of the workforce in the front line. And then look at how many of the non-whites are in the management ranks. It's like conservatives are fine with the minorities and immigrants being over here as long as they are doing the low level job. But as soon as the minorities start progressing and competing and have their own voting rights, you want your country back? Just admit that you are afraid to compete. You are afraid to have a level playing field. No one is afraid of the competition. I don't care what you and the rest of the liberal media think. My heart aches when I see our people hurting economically. And yet, half the country is sitting at home comfortably drawing welfare checks. And you can rest assured that I'm gonna do everything in my power to bring jobs back to our people and put an end to the welfare system that's sucking the air out of our economy. So we are supposed to feel white people's pain and bring jobs back to their towns? But when the people of color lack their jobs in the urban areas, we expect them to learn new skills because the government and the society do not owe them anything? You know that rhetoric like yours that are greatly responsible for the deviance in our country and a spike in the hate crimes, which Oh, by the way, no one from your party or the church felt the need to condemn. That's not true. The president and several others in our party have strongly condemned the recent attacks on mosques and synagogues. No, Mr. Bimalik. That's an alternative fact. And with that, we have run out of time. Good night all and may we live to see another day. Cain, have you ever wondered why man was exiled from the Garden of Eden? No, sir. Well, I always do. The Lord said, from any tree of the garden you may eat freely, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see, Cain, the sheep can be made to believe anything in the name of faith. And that's partly why they cannot be trusted to govern themselves. What would happen if you put a lion and a tiger and an elephant and a zebra in a cage together? Mayhem, sir. And yet, they somehow survived on Noah's Ark. Most people have an inherent need to be led. They don't like uncertainty. People like you and I provide them structure. As long as they have some hope in life, they let themselves be controlled. Unlike you, Cain, I don't consider myself to be a particularly religious person. But I do appreciate religion as an important tool to provide structure and a sense of purpose to the masses. It gives them hope for a meaningful future and justice eventually. Throughout history, Governments have created false narratives and false gods to secure social order. The Romans did the same by concocting a competing belief system to equalize its troublesome Jewish people. Psychological warfare, perhaps at its finest, resulting in the world's largest religion. And once you can make people believe in a superior being, you can make them believe anything.
through the lens of your ideology, their ideology. Now, I'm no Hitler fan, but I do have tremendous admiration for his key qualities. Vision, leadership, mind control. And we finally have a president who inspires the masses in the same way. I just wish we would kill all the Muslims and Jews and niggers instead of shipping them off. Logistically, a lot easier. I wish so too, sometimes. But you gotta be politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> We underestimated some of them packies and sand niggers when we started kicking them out. I, for one, never really imagined them being good enough to start building their own countries. And that's the last thing we want right now. We already let Azad slip through our fingers. Now don't let his Jew friend get away too! Understood, sir! You know the significance of your name, son. When the Lord asked for an offering, Cain brought him fruit, but Abel brought him the flesh of his flock. And the Lord loved flesh and blood, but had no regard for Cain's offering. So he killed Abel, his own brother. All Cain wanted was to be accepted. Good night, Angel. Good night, Papa. I was bullied again at school today. Same kids? No, different ones. Started taunting her at the cafeteria. Started chanting. Go back to where you came from. Bastards. This is all because of our new president. Son of a bitch. Give fuel to the fire. How was work today? It's getting worse. Today they laid off a bunch of people, mostly minorities. I wonder if we will even be here next Hanukkah. They just deported our neighbors to Mexico. They had been living here legally for 20 years. Only their five-year-old daughter was spared. Who's gonna look after her? Don't know when this hell will be over. God help us all. I haven't even heard from Azad. I don't know where he is. Things are even worse for Muslims. Who could be here at this hour? 
wait let me see Where is Azad? Why is a Jew trying to save a Muslim? The animals won't understand. Where's the Bible?
आजाद बेटा आजाद आजाद क्या कर रहे मैंने वादे दिए हैं क्या कर रहे हैं मम्मी हेडफोन ले आते हैं हर वक्त लैपटॉप पे बैठे रहते हैं क्या कर रहे हैं इसपे कुछ नहीं अम्मी ये क्या लिखा हुआ है मोहम्मद कजाफी इसको दर्शा हो गया मरे को अब क्या कर रहे हैं इसको कोई सच कुछ नहीं अम्मी बस मैं थोड़ा रीड कर रहा था मैं तो परेशान हूँ तुम्हें देख कर की क्या करते रहते हो हर वक्त कुछ नहीं करता मैं अम्मी यहाँ परेशान हो सिर्फ मैं बस रिसर्च करता रहता हूँ ना किसी की नजरों में आ जाना तुमने पूरी दुनिया का ठेका लिया हुआ है किसी का ठीक नहीं लिया मम्मी कुछ नहीं किसी की नजरों में नहीं आता आप परेशान ना हो चलो उठो अभी हमने जाना शेख साहब के तुम्हारे रिश्ता वगैरह के सिलसिले में आप मुझे थोड़ा सा टाइम दे दें प्लीज कितने बजे जाना है मेरे बस अभी एक घंटे तक चलो ठीक है आप जाए मैं तैयार हो जाता हूँ मुझे प्लीज ये कम्प्लीट करने में I miss you grandpa
in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of player money proud arrogant disobedient ungrateful unholy heartless slanderers brutal treacherous having the appearance of godliness but denying its power avoid such people father somebody is here son you okay christian muslim what brings you here interested in jesus doesn't corinthia state that women should remain silent in the churches they are not allowed to speak but must be in submission or let's see timothy chapter 2 I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. So why should I listen to you? You are misinformed, my child. The Bible gives equal rights to men and women. Not the one that I am holding. Man is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. Wives submit yourselves unto your husbands as is fitting in the Lord If a man rapes a virgin and they are discovered he shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver If no proof of the girl's virginity can be found she shall be brought to her father's door where the men of her town shall stone her to death stop why doesn't it bother you that solomon could have hundreds of wives and concubines but you can't have a single partner shouldn't it bother you that women are regarded as men's property if her husband nullifies them then none of her vows or pledges will stand and the lord will release her or maybe you find solace in this bit in particular now kill all the boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man so let me ask you why do you believe sister Why so much anger, child? Christ died for our sins, so we could be saved. Maybe that's part of the problem with these cop-out religions. Someone else pays for your sins, so as long as you believe in Him, you'll ultimately be relieved from any responsibility for your wrongdoings. And those who don't believe in your God will go to hell regardless of how good they have lived their lives. That's not true. The Lord is surely forgiving and jealous and controlling. The very basis of religion is monopoly, exclusivity, and thus discrimination, and us versus them kind of mentality. Uniformity, not exclusivity. More like conformity. Just think about it for a second. Without diversity, different schools of thought, rebellion against conformity. nothing progressive would have been possible in the world think mandela gandhi jinnah dr king ali jobs i can't decide what's scarier 
people actually believing in these kinds of dogma or the possibility that such religions may actually be true? I think I have started to like you, son. Would you be open to coming to a sermon, perhaps? Maybe coming again? But with an open mind, we'll bring you closer to God. You and I aren't much different, Father. I only believe in one fear God than you do. How many kills this week, nigga? Five Mexicans. Hallelujah. That's my nigga. Raves. Call. Check. Check. <laughs> Go make it six.
the human willpower is a fascinating phenomenon. For some, it can make them strangely resilient. We've tried brainwashing gifted people like you and your friend, but I've begun to wonder if we're only left with one option, unless you join us, which I don't sense happening. And I don't particularly enjoy someone testing my patience. He didn't give a shit on Azad. Why am I not surprised? Why him though? For all we know, he may even be drowned in a sea or lying dead in a desert by now. I doubt it. Not if you believe in eugenics. We may be giving his resilience way too much credit. Son. When a race has been enslaved or occupied for so long that it starts accepting it as normal, there is an inferiority complex that gets ingrained in its DNA. Look at the niggers and the Chicanos. But you don't see that complex in the Chinks, in Persians, in Turks. The Pakis and Indians are barely getting out of that mindset, which doesn't bode well for our global supremacy either. May I ask you something, sir? Did Azad ever work for us? One of the best that I've seen during my service. One of the few who aren't governed by the inferiority complex of their race. But then one day, he decided to turn against us. And we found out that he had his own agenda. Didn't even care about losing his own grandfather for his cause. You gotta crush such people before their vision and confidence become dangerously real. I will find him and bring him back, dead or alive. Hello? Everything okay? Azad Khan Grandson of Zarar Khan You mean the late General Zarar Khan? Uh -huh. Okay Let me see what I can do Okay, bye So it is him. Hello. Tell you, Mr. Kane, we have tracked us out. Why do we hate, Father? Hate, love, sin. We are not perfect, son. Only God is. Why is it that we need some God to tell us what's right and wrong? Deep down, we all know. If anything, religion has done more harm than good throughout history. Without religion, there will be no hope or justice. Or murder and destruction. Millions of non-believers ruthlessly killed. All in the name of God and our primitive need for control. Is that why you are here, son? 
Have you taken someone's life? Have you seen? I used to be overseas. Had a decent job, nice house, car, girlfriend, had everything going for me. But I didn't feel fulfilled. And then I found a gig which I thought was finally allowing me to serve a greater purpose. Upholding the great Western values of democracy and individual freedom around the world. Even if it came at the price of sacrificing innocent lives at times. But I kept doing it and justifying it until I couldn't justify it anymore. Couldn't live with it anymore. I'm listening. I couldn't go to sleep anymore. I felt I had the blood of innocent people on my hands. All these wars for oil and natural resources that we were waging in the name of eradicating terrorism and spreading democracy. I'd wake up at night and when I'd hear all these influential people, supposedly righteous, God-fearing leaders shaping the popular narrative and brainwashing the masses at home to justify their genocidal invasions against people who didn't believe or look like them, I just couldn't live with it anymore. How couldn't more people see what was really going on? Because they were too busy chasing the Western dream that never really existed. It was only a mechanism to brainwash the masses to buy into something that the rich knew most people would never be able to achieve, yet needed their buy-in to be extolled and looked up to as well as be absolved from their greed and corruption that was destroying society and, and poor people's lives. Hope is a powerful tool, Father. As long as people have hope that they, too, can someday be rich, they'll be willing to overlook the cruel fact that a person can have a criminal record for smoking pot or shoplifting, and yet rich people who have committed crimes worth tens of millions are able to get away with a slap on the wrist. So what was the final straw that led you to leave it all and come back home? Perhaps the final straw was when the current president and his chief strategist came into power and how it truly exposed the underlying bigotry and apathy of the conservatives, many of whom seem to be our friends on the surface, but deep down truly believed that non-Christians and non-whites did not belong. Perhaps you can understand the plight of the minorities in this country, I suppose. I do now. I never thought I had a privileged upbringing until I myself lived as a minority in another country especially one so divided and intolerant. Perhaps now you can understand how it feels to be treated differently by the cops and the judicial system, the very institution that are supposed to uphold the rule of law. I do. That's when I started working toward my vision of a world based on humanistic principles, not some bigoted religious principles, whereby human life and individual liberty to be whomever we choose to be are valued over anything else. A world that provides for all humankind and not just a few at the top. This, unfortunately, is not possible without a new world order, the wheels for which have already been set in motion. A balance of power between the East and the West, a principle of deterrence due to mutual destruction. Just like the US and Russia never went to war against each other, if my vision gets implemented, we'll hopefully, finally, be able to coexist in peace. So glad to see you again. See you here, Uncle. How are you? Great. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Uh, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I want to talk to you about something important. Oh, yes, sir. Please, no calls and no business.
I have no reasons not to believe you. So you are giving me such an incredulous information. So go ahead. Because I can completely understand where you're coming from. But you're pretty much the only one that I can trust, knowing that you keep this information to yourself in case something were to happen to me. Oh my God. Just forget about that. Nothing will happen to you. And no bastard can come here. Anymore. Nobody can touch you. Anymore. So, you mean to say that uh, the death of your grandpa in that accident with the Iranian Minister of Energy was not an accident? It was arranged by Carr. Oh my God. Carr's primary target was the Iranian energy chief. Oh. But once I defected from the organization, mm -hmm. they took out grandpa as well, knowing that he was the only person in our military who was privy to this information and my alternative agenda. Which was? Creating an Eastern Bloc of these five countries based on five core pillars of true independence from Western influence. Mm -hmm. Strong military, natural resources, advanced education, media control and outreach to shape the narrative, mm -hmm. and self-sustainable industries. My God. It helps that these countries are in close proximity of each other to make this block feasible. Exactly. You mean that? Absolutely. We have a nut job who truly hates Muslims and is influenced by the clash of civilizations ideology. Serving as a chief strategist to the president of currently the most powerful country on earth. Mm -hmm. If he gets his way, we'll be in an all-out World War III before we even know it. I firmly believe that the best way to stop this maniac is to create an equally strong, if not stronger, coalition in the East based on these five principles of mutual interest, which can deter us from going to war in the first place. And you really believe that your former contacts in the militaries in those countries actively working on the plan? I believe so. I hope so. All right, let's see what happens. And don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. You are safe home. In case something were to happen to me, I want you to have this. If I were to disappear, go to Grandpa's grave and you'll be able to unlock the tablet. Then why don't you give me the damn password just now? Trust me, uncle. I'm protecting you from yourself. Who's there? Munna, this is Azad. Open the door. Okay, call me. I need your help urgently. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. You're studying computer science, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so. Have you done encryption before? Yeah, I have done it. Okay, I need your help in sending Ruby a message urgently. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Tell you later. Can we do it right now, please? Yeah, come in. Let's go. All right, so I have all the data on the stick. All right. So, it's loading. And I want you to send the encrypted message on this email address. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything is fine. I'll tell you later. Just wait a few seconds. Okay, okay. it's encrypting. Sending. Sending. Send. Because you did not serve the Lord, your God, with gladness of heart, 
you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst in nakedness and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you for I the Lord am a jealous God on secret government's entity that has been running unconstitutional and criminal acts in many cases against our fellow citizens. Nothing should shock us anymore but this is a new law in the history of our great country. Ka, short for the Knights of the Oil Tribe, has been running concentration camp style secret cells in several states where foreigners and even our own citizens are tortured and interrogated without access to any legal due process. Sources tell us Carr is directly involved with several recent high profile abductions and killings of minorities and key liberal and progressive leaders. The president and other key figures in our government are reportedly aware of all this and have provided their approval for Carr's ongoing operations. One of the car's key mission is to maintain racial supremacy through control of financial institutions and government and military jobs, minimization of minorities' leadership roles in public and private sectors, strict gun control for minorities, colonization of third world countries through strategic invasions and enslaving them in debt through World Bank, IMF, Carr has been particularly targeting the high potential individuals who have left this country and are now building their own countries. The choice reportedly given to them is to renounce their faith, voluntarily submit to memory error and join Carr. If they don't comply, they are eliminated. Carr has reportedly also been planning a rush tag fire type event for a few weeks now to reinvigorate dwindling support for the current administration, which has hit a historically low level. I will end our segment with a message from our source. We will leave your countries when you will leave ours. Find your beauty, Mr. Kane. Normally, I don't get along with your card, but everyone has a price. Looking forward to work with you, Mr. Kane. Keep the change. Mr. 
Dumbass, where the hell are you? What the fuck are you doing in library? We lost him, idiot. Come back to the police station, idiot. Wasted the whole day chasing Azad. Stop, stop, come here. What do you have here? What do you have here? Pathan? Afghan? You don't look local. Russian? Hmm. American? Congratulations, sir. You have been randomly selected for special screening. Hands up! What do you have here? you
I'm glad you're okay. Where am I? You were found at the bomb blast location. We tried to save you. Last night. Did anyone die? About 20. Several injured though. Let me make a call. One Munna, pick up the damn phone. Why was the police looking for you? Wait, how do you know the police were looking for me? The father overheard some people talking about a person similar to you. Don't worry about it, it's nothing. I hope so. Where's father? He went out to get some stuff. By the way, sorry about the other day, I didn't mean to be rude. It's perfectly alright, man. Why were the police looking for you? It's nothing, don't worry about it. Go on. I'll make another call. Come on, Uncle, pick up the phone. Why isn't anyone picking up the phone to me? Would you like to come along? Where are you going? Up north. For how long? For good. For good? Yeah. What are you going to do there? We're going to set up another church. Who's going to take care of the church over here? Those arrangements have been made. I'm glad you are okay, son. Thanks for saving my life. You're welcome. Ready to go? He's coming along. Are you? Hey bro, what's up? No, I haven't seen the news. What, Ruby? Ruby found from around the world? No shit. Hold on, I will call you later. Let me check the news. The police are yet to name a suspect in the murder of one of the top Muslim newscasters in the West. Around the world's Ruby Khan, allegedly by right-wing extremist groups, which some have dubbed domestic terrorism. It's me, Munna. Open the door, Dhena. Coming. What happened? Where is Alaf? What happened? Is everything okay? I don't know. Where is he? He's not picking up my phone calls. I have heard there's a blast in the market. The police were looking for him. I don't know what's going on. We are all worried. If he calls you back, ask him to call me. Beauty bastards.
to gain. I have trapped you, man. But the price is doubled now. One million. Deep. Russia. Three is China. And nine. Nine. Nine is Iran. And six. It's been three days since the cold-blooded murder of our beloved Ruby Khan, but no arrests have been made by the authorities here. The government is denying the existence of KAR or other covert entities, calling such reports, quote, fake news fabricated by the liberal media. Meanwhile, more and more former government agents are coming out with information on arguably unconstitutional acts being committed by the current administration. Most notably, plans to implement a minority registration numbering system through an upcoming executive order, government contracts, private prison systems that inhumanely employ immigrants and others as cheap labor in clear violation of the Anti Slavery Act, and eliminating the requirement for hiring managers 
to interview at least one qualified female for government openings. This begs an important question that we as a nation must ask ourselves. How do we get to this point whereby government now has the audacity to, to take away our freedom and pit us against one another? The powers that be are able to get away with all of this because we place the blame for our problems on one another based on race, color, religion, immigration status, while our common struggles are economic in nature. While we are busy fighting one another for supposedly limited opportunities and resources, the white collar criminals are bankrupting our country behind the scenes. In a closely connected, albeit divided world, and they went like the state-sponsored murder of an activist journalist here can have far-reaching impact, as evident by the retaliatory killing. 20 innocent church goers by an 18-year-old boy 8,000 miles away. What is pathetic is that the government is already using it as a justification for its fascist policies, a prelude to potentially a Reichstag fire-type event, if all else fails. We, as a proud nation, have to look ourselves in the mirror and start acting before it's too late. Do we believe in dogma that teaches us that anyone who does not believe in our God is going to hell? If so, are we really able to put a bias aside and treat the person fairly? Probably not. If you're a conservative Christian brother or sister watching our show right now, we need you to stand up against parties, bigotry and policies driven by hatred selfishness, greed, and xenophobia. Ask yourselves, what would Jesus do? We must stop assigning bigoted and stereotypical labels to entire peoples, expecting others to collectively assume responsibility for acts committed by individuals, when we, ironically, are quick to absorb ourselves of any transgressions committed by someone who's one of us. We've got to look past the immigrant versus native narrative. When many of us have supported colonizing the entire sovereign countries in the name of war on terrorism, which in itself is the cruelest form of imposed immigration. The buck stops with us. We have a choice to make at this critical juncture in history. We can choose to give God facts, fake news, and continue fighting one another. Or we can choose to join the rebellion that has already begun. We can choose to keep following capitalist leaders and corrupt politicians, or we can choose to be all leaders in this movement to take our country back. Remember, they can kill us, but they cannot kill our nation.
Alas, we meet for the first and unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for you, the only time. You know, you had everything going for you. Money, women, power, yet you decided you wanted to play the savior. They want me to bring you back alive. But you and I both know that's not gonna happen. I could have shot you in the wilderness, but that would have been too easy. Oddly enough, I've developed a certain degree of respect for you. You deserve a more honorable death. I thought of crucifying you, but then you aren't worthy of dying the way the Lord sacrificed himself for some of us. You know, Leonardo da Vinci used to believe that mankind represented a microcosm of the universe, fitting within a circle, the most perfect shape of them all. Man is a reflection of the celestial, the divine, and yet, fitting within a square, man is a reflection of the earth, a manifestation of its four elements. And this, my friend, makes man God's perfect creation in the whole damn universe, a symbol of life. And today, we offer our Lord this humble sacrifice of his perfect creation. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. While the world is still coming to terms with the assassination of the President and the Pope in the nation's capital on January 19th and the subsequent arrest of the alleged mastermind behind it, the deceased President's chief strategist is currently being held in custody at an unknown location. Five major powers have now announced their defection from the World Bank and IMF. Earlier this morning, China, Iran, Pakistan, Russia and Turkey had announced the formation of an Eastern Bloc with plans to create a common currency. This has already sent major Western currencies and stock markets tumbling with fear and uncertainty around a new kind of warfare on the global stage. Hold on, hold on, we are breaking news. The military has...